Hello all. So today we are going to discuss on few Scrum Master interview questions which was asked during my interview with Deloitte. And also I'm going to uh, share you few extra bonus tips on how to answer these questions. So this is the round one, which I had. And on the whole, I had uh, two technical rounds from Deloitte. So before we get into the actual interview, just want to add a, a few points. So this interview question and answer discussion is purely based on my own experience or my trained associate experience only. So this is uh, this I want to be very clear upfront. And one more disclaimer is P. For example, within Deloitte itself, there may be different projects, and different projects may be having a different strategy to conduct a Scrum Master interview. This is not only for a Scrum Master, this is even applicable for all the rules. So you should be prepared for the role, particularly based on the JD. And this is my own experience, which I'm sharing. And the, whatever answers we are discussing here is based upon my perspective. And even the expectation differs from interviewer to interviewer and individual perspective it may be different. In this video, we will be discussing on also the appropriate way to answer each question. And as I mentioned, I'm going to add few extra bonus tips also on how to answer a question very impressive. Okay, please do watch this video from start to end and also provide your support for my channel. Okay, so Deloitte round one. First of all, I was uh, um, slightly nervous because it's the first time I'm attending an interview with uh, one of the big four companies and Deloitte is one of that. So I was prepared mentally and I was expecting like it would maybe a very uh, tougher one for me. So with that, I started. So first question was about as usual self intro we started and then the total interview duration was only for 30 minutes on the whole so within 30 minutes i felt like <laughs> they covered like many questions because few interviewer may it varies from interview to interview but here they cover like a lot of concepts here and there first technical question whatever they ask is have you worked with kanban before So this is based upon the personal experience you need to answer. Actually speaking, I haven't worked with the Kanban team. I have uh, coordinated with the Kanban team, but directly I haven't managed or I have worked in, I haven't worked in a Kanban team. Okay, but I have my um, core team, which is using Kanban. So from that, uh, when I used to sync up with them, I used to understand few practical ways how they are using Kanban also. So this question I answered from my perspective. And but one thing you need to always have in mind is you should not blindly tell like no, I haven't worked with Kanban. See, you should be telling that you have good experience with Scrum, but you are aware, right? You are aware of the Kanban concepts, right? So mention, mention that. Mention your conference level with Kanban concepts that can give a positive note for you. Okay, so I answered in the same way. Since you mentioned that, but if you're not confident, then don't mention. <laughs> but uh, just tell like you're ready to learn 
in that way you can put a positive note but don't mention if you're not very confident with kanban concept because after this i got a follow-up question what is the difference between kanban and the scrum okay so for any difference whatever they're asking i'm telling like not only for scrum versus kanban for anything you need to have a minimum at least three to four differences very clear so what i how i answered is uh first point is scrum is based on agile values right we have four agile values and kanban is based on the lean values so this concept came from lean manufacturing i hope you will be knowing so the base the basic or the origin i started with that and then in scrum there will be like formal roles right like scrum master uh, product owner developers so here there may not be a formal role available okay for kanban it's not mandatory next is scrum works on a time box event whereas kanban does not like everything is time boxed within a kanban and also when it comes to events within a scrum for each sprint all the scrum events are non-negotiable and it should be happening right but in kanban it is not so they also work towards continuous improvement everything but it is optional for them that flexibility kanban is having but scrum does not offer that flexibility coming to the releases the kanban offers more frequent releases compared to scrum next metrics metrics is the scrum will be focusing on certain metrics certain metrics for example consider the velocity okay velocity then predictability so these are some metrics which uh, the scrum will be focusing whereas in kanban the focus will be mostly towards the lead time cycle time throughput work in progress these things okay so metrics part also i explained so i believe like this is the best uh answer which you can give in terms of differences because i cover like almost everything which ever required there may be more points also but always remember stick to four to five points at the max don't go with many points that may actually make the interviewer feel feel bored also next What type of projects best suit for Kanban? Yes. Uh, I'm not sure uh, from where the interviewer derived with the Kanban here, because I haven't mentioned anywhere uh, Kanban in my resume. But I believe uh, whoever interviewed me has like more exposure to Kanban too. So the next question was also from Kanban. OK, maybe I was telling like I'm confident with Can uh, Kanban process. That's why they have. Uh, ask like a series of follow-up questions on Kanban. But, okay, coming to the next question, what type of project best suit for Kanban? So what I did, I quoted a scenario because I, as I mentioned, I know already my core team is using Kanban. So using that, I quoted an example where they are using Kanban. Okay, generally Kanban, they will be using for some maintenance project or enhancement project where we will be having like a, a continuous flow. We'll be having a continuous flow of uh, value. And uh, we, for example, in maintenance project, there will be uh, tickets. They'll be like handling with tickets also. And they will have like certain number of VIP limit. That means work in progress limit, which they follow. So, you should be explaining these kind of things with the practical example that would um, make your answer appear good. Okay, moving to next. According to you, Scrum or Kanban, which is best? So the interviewer is noted uh, fine in leaving me from out of Kanban. So again, this um, related question, Scrum or Kanban? See, this is from the individual perspective, okay. this is an individual perspective question so i personally 
Well, Scrum is best because I have worked with Scrum, right? So it's a general, general human thought. But I started with the note that both Scrum or Kanban has its pros and cons. Correct. So from that, I told my opinion that according to me, Scrum is best. So in what way Scrum is best? Also, I explain. Okay, because it depends mainly on the project, right? So I just put up the same point. It depends upon the type of the project where we are using a particular framework. So with, with that point, I just concluded in one or two lines this particular question. Next. Why do you use safe in your project? Okay, this is a question from my resume. So since I have mentioned safe, uh, the interviewer asked this question. So first I mentioned the need for safe in my organization. So you should also tell the purpose why you're going for safe. And then one point which many people tend to forget is they tend to miss whether you're following safe in a program level or solution level. So for me, like I follow like safe in a program level. So that program level safe, you should be mentioning very clearly. And why we are going for a safe because like for me, I had a reason about like, it's an integration project and we have like a lot of dependencies which needs to be addressed. So in that way, you can put a clear answer, one line answer, so that they will be able to understand the real purpose why you are using SAFE in your project or organization. Okay, next is a frequently asked question. Um, one of my favorite, uh, difference between a sprint, burn down chart and a burn up chart. So here also, the interviewer was very clear. Initially, the interviewer mentioned just burn up or burn, burn down. Okay, burn up and burn down. But the sprint word, the interviewer didn't mention. But I asked, are you referring to sprint, burn down, and burn up chart? Then, yes, because we have like many pick burn down, we have least burn down, we have many charts we have, right? So we should be very clear. Sometimes there may be a purpose where we need to ask them some cross question for clarification. Uh, don't think like that we create a wrong impression. No, actually the interviewer will be very happy. Most of the interviewer will be ha very happy to clarify that because without understanding the question completely, don't ever start with that with your answers. The difference between a sprint burn down and the burn up chat. First, I started with the purpose. So why we are using sprint burn up chat and burn down chat? So, but see, both are having like, we are tracking the progress. Okay, so the main difference is print burn down chart will tell how much points we have remaining in our board as a part of the sprint. And how many story points we have completed, we will be able to derive from sprint burn up chart. And the graph, what is the x-axis, y-axis? See, that can be changed from zero also, but Ideally speaking, the number of days, for example, day one, day two will be on x-axis and the story points will be on y-axis. So the graph axis you need to clearly mention. Next, the scope change. Scope change. You should clearly mention this difference, but this is one of the major difference between a sprint burn up and burn down chart. Scope change is very clearly mentioned separately in the burn up chart. Whereas in sprint burn down chart, it will be, it will not be separately highlighted. But always remember there may be follow up question from this point. So you should be very clear about scope change also. Now the scope change that the follow-up question may be, what is the use of a scope change or what is a scope change? How will you handle scope change? These type of questions may be asked as a follow-up. Or there may be questions asked, can't you see scope change in burn down chart? Then we can see, but not as a separate section in Jira. I'm talking about Jira only, okay? So it differs from ADO or any other tool. This is one of the difference. Next, which you use or prefer? That also you should have add. So not only I use sprint burn down chart because I feel like I can track the progress very clearly using a burn down chart. So it differs from individual.
So next question. What reports do you share to your stakeholders every See, this also differs from or organization to organization. Normally in my project, I just spoke with my project. Here, like the sprint report will be having all the details related to the sprint. So for that, I have posted a separate video uh, in my channel. You can just check it. How a sprint report looks, what is the template we are using, everything I have shared. So I just started with, with we uh because one of my client prefers PPT. One of my client is fine with confidence page itself. So I mentioned my own sprint report, how it looks and what are the um data which the sprint report will be having, everything. And I mentioned like that sprint report I'll be sharing post sprint review meeting. That also you need to mention. When are you sharing? That would be just a good to have. You can add it. The interviewer will be like very um happy. If you are telling things very clearly, okay, the sprint report, then uh, you should be telling like what are the things there. For example, uh, uh, I used to have even the velocity chart to show like how the team is progressing, sprint burn down chart, and also uh, some basic things like uh, predictability percentage, capacity, impediment. So these things also I used to have it in my sprint report, which I explained one by one. But on a very high level, you should not go very in depth on these things. Okay. So um, you can you can just refer to my video that can give a very good insight on how a sprint report looks. Going to the next question, when and how do you manage this? See, this is one of the tricky questions. Okay, which few interviewer ask when two parts are there. When do you manage risk? How do you manage? First of all. Risk can be managed any time in a scrum. There is no particular time that within this time only team should be expressing a risk. Okay. Even in daily standup meeting, that's why I mentioned DSU. Even in daily standup meeting, the team should be actually we are doing a risk management here and there. In risk ma here we are inspecting and adapting, right? So in a daily scrum, also we are doing the same. We are managing our risk in a very transparent way, right? But officially speaking, in a quarterly planning meeting, we used to do, we used to um, ex explicitly ask the team about the risk and we follow a room approach where, uh, which you might have used in your real time project also. And we will ensure that the risk is getting mitigated and what is the plan for handling the risk, how we are going to manage that risk, everything like we'll be discussing in the quarterly planning meeting itself. So this is like different from organization to organization, but at the end, whatever risk you are having, you should provide a transparency to the stakeholders on the impact. Transparency to stakeholders on the impact of the particular risk. So that needs to be highlighted to the stakeholders. So this is also purely, uh, I can tell like, um, you should be relating with your real project and then you should be answering this particular question. Next, what are the challenges you face this come up? See, this is the commonly asked question, right? So always remember you might have faced like n number of challenges as a scrum master, but you should take one or two standard good example which can project you in a very good way. You should explain with the root cause and how as a scrum master you dissolved in real time. That also you need to add. Just mentioning in one line or two line, this is the challenge like I face. That doesn't sound good. So always remember, take two example, mention the along with the root, explain the challenge first. What is the root cause, how you resolve it in your real-time project. So um, this you should be very clear. And um, as a Scrum Master, how you are helping the team will be evaluated from this answer, whatever you are doing. Which is the most difficult Scrum meeting? 
surprisingly this question came up to me okay so this is also it differs from its uh, personal opinion right so individual perspective it may be different but i answered product backlog defendment even though it is not one of the standard scrum event i mentioned product backlog defendment meeting because that is my opinion uh, i know very well like next there will be a follow up question why product backlog defendment meeting i am thinking as difficult so i was ready with the same answer already P uh, PBR, that means product backlog refinement meeting, according to me, sometimes what happens, see, I'm really talking about my experience. So what happens is, uh, sometimes I feel like, I felt difficult to make it time box. We know very well, product backlog refinement meeting can happen whenever and as needed, right? But keeping within time box, it's one of the challenging tasks because sometimes some technical discussion will take you deeper, deeper, deeper. And then like team will, at the end of the product backlog defendment, sometimes the team might have only um estimated, you can tell like refined only one or two stories. I'm not telling like that is not correct. Yeah, if the team is in a farming stage, we can do that. But if it is happening frequently, like more technical discussions are taking taking the team and taking time, then it is difficult for a scrum master to keep the product backlog defending meeting time boxed. So I just mentioned this particular difficulty, whatever I felt. So next question: commonly observed anti patterns in refund. This is also a good question. So first, anti-pattern, whatever I felt is sometimes like uh, estimation from my team initially was not given by all the team members. So I felt uh, I have seen this anti-pattern before. Then we slowly made modifications in the way we are working. And then like everyone started giving estimation. Next anti-pattern, which I observed in refinement is estimation given by the product owner. So the product owner can help the team to estimate, but estimation cannot be provided by the product owner. It is actually a clear anti-pattern. These two I mentioned. Next, uh, it's a scenario-based question. So the customer wants a new feature to be completed in one month. How will you handle the situation? Okay, see, this type of scenario-based question, you should be very clear about the question first. Then you should jump into answers. Okay. So first, analyze the business need. Why they want it in one month and what is the purpose? So first, like as a team, we need to analyze. So from a Scrum Master perspective, see, always remember, don't give a commitment initially itself. We need to first check with the team once and then like it is always better to give a commitment to the stakeholders. First, analyze the business needs. Then the team will be able to understand what is the scope of this particular future. Next, we should have a capacity planning because one month we have time. Within one month means we may have some folks unavailability also. So we need to take that into consideration and then we need to do a high level planning and a an high level estimation. So high level estimation of the efforts, how much effort this may take. So on a whole and high level estimation, we should, we should do along with the team. And then we need to plan for a trade-off. This is one of the important points. So this, some people used to miss this point. Trade-off, you would have come across this word in your Scrum Guide also, trade-off. We should do a trade-off. For example, you're taking a feature A newly into your backlog. Then, same amount, approximately same amount of another feature. Feature B should be deprioritized and a trade-off should be done. So that should be decided by the team. And at the last, you need to get the commitment from the team and also, you need to share the same to the stakeholders and have a review meeting with the stakeholders, telling like this is the scope we are planning and we are good with this particular timeline. If you need like more time, then you need to have a proper justification why. Sometimes it may be like if the client is asking in a December and the year end, then like there may be like some planned vacation time also from the team, right? So always remember this is how like. Uh, 
you can handle the situation, but it's up to your own perspective and the client expectation, how you are handling. But from my perspective, I have explained in this, week, this particular answer. And I believe like uh, um, the interviewer was convinced, but had a follow-up question. What is the relationship between a capacity and a velocity? Because I mentioned the word capacity in my previous question. So first I mentioned what is the purpose of a capacity? So mainly capacity is used to find, used for allocation, right? Mainly how much percentage we have availability from folks, right? So purpose of capacity. Velocity means it's the average number of story points the team is able to complete or deliver within the spread, right? So if you are looking for more uh, velocity related, you can go through one of my video, uh, the clear velocity calculation I have given in one of my video. Then I mentioned the relationship between the capacity and the velocity, how we are. So this, you, um, as a scrum master, you'll be using the capacity planning sheet, right? So how many hours available uh, per sprint? And then you will be having, uh, you will be deriving with the average velocity. That means you'll be coming up with the forecast that, okay, we have considered we have 80 percentage of capacity only from the team. Then we cannot commit more story points, right? So that relationship I explained with an example. So in this way, this capacity and velocity will be helping us to focus, sorry, forecast. That means it help us to understand and have a sprint forecast ready. We can forecast how much work a team can complete. So I explained in this way, but luckily I didn't get a follow-up question from this. Yeah, from velocity, I didn't get, but for capacity, again, what if we don't do capacity plan? So this also should be very clear. If we didn't do capacity planning, then the team may overcommit things. For example, you are having a small team of five team members, just five developers. Okay, so if you are like asking them to complete two sprints work in one sprint, then team will. If the team is overcommitting, then what happen? There is a likelihood for a spillover, right? Spillover means things will not be completed on time, and few of the user stories will be carry forward to the next system. So that can happen if you are not, if you're not doing a proper capacity plan. So that I mentioned. So that's it uh, from my entire Deloitte round one. Then I had general uh, questions related to job change reason, your current location, so these things, general questions. So on the whole, what I felt is interviewer expectation was to the point answer. The interviewer was expecting, not expecting too much stories and only expecting to the point answer, it is very good. Okay. And not too detailed answer. So based upon the interviewer view, please try to answer your question. Because if your interviewer is going to interrupt you in between your explanation, then like the he may not be a big fan of a very long answer. Okay, so to the point answer, this interviewer expected, and I was able to clear the round one. Maybe round two, we will see again. Thank you, all the best folks. Hope this video is useful. Bye.